So welcome to this uh, edition of Astute HR Mythbusters. Today I've got the pleasure of speaking with uh, Rohit Bassi. Hi Rohit, how are you doing? Hey. So let me let me uh, let me uh, uh, talk about Rohit. So Rohit and I have known each other since we were children, in fact, over over thirty years. I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. Um, so so we've known each other a very long time. Um, Rohit, I'm going to read on the back of his book, which is what we're going to talk about today, which I thought would be really helpful to people listening in the current climate in terms of what to do, how to handle it, how to get your head straight to deal with what is really stressful. People don't know what to do, whether they're paying their mortgage, what's happening with their jobs, what to do with their kids. Their kids don't know what to do. They don't know what's happening with their A-levels, their GCSEs and so forth. So I thought it would be nice to get away from the business aspect of things and perhaps talk about the mindset of things. So, so Rohit is, is part of a National Academy of Best-Selling Authors. He's a global conference speaker. He's a TEDx speaker, a premium trainer and coach. He's got over 25 years of experience, and he's spoken in over 21 countries. Um, Rohit, is that, is that a good intro? Thank you very much for reading yeah, from the back of the book. Very well done. <laughs> you me. can read. <laughs> so, so tell me, Rohit, you know, I wanted to talk, there were three things that I, I you know, joking aside, I got some really, really good points from this book, which was such an easy read, in fact, um, something like 20 minutes. Um, uh, to, to, to go through it and it was really quite powerful as well and but I'm going to try and condense it into uh, just the three things that I'd like to talk about that I think uh, people would benefit by, by listening to uh, and the three things that I got from the book that I want to talk to you about was was number one was gratitude and number mm. two was taking responsibility for your own actions as yeah. in a hundred percent taking responsibilities for what's happening in your life not yeah. letting things happen to you and the third thing was about the compassion disconnect or poverty mindset which yes. is going to, um, which I think will be very relevant uh, with what's happening right now. So let's start off with, with, with the gratitude uh, point. Yeah. How does that relate, how people can relate uh, that to what's, or translate that into what's happening right now, Rohit? Thank okay. you. So um, it's a very strange time. Now, uh, you've known me for a long time and we reconnected after God knows how many years. And um, it just feels like we never disconnected, simple as that. And in the times when we used to be together, you knew I could hardly even you know, uh, construct a sentence together. And through the years, uh, as I've grown, uh, as I've learned, one of the things which I learned was, okay, we need to be able to communicate to the outside world. So the yes. construction of your sentences, of your words is very important. Yes. But what yes. about the communication, what's happening within yourself? That is very, very crucial. Before you can go outside, you need to go inside. So this is where the gratitude part comes in a massive, massive way. It is people, people mistake it for being spiritual or religious. It's got nothing to do with it. It's just uh, people don't like the word religion and spiritual. Gratitude yeah. is a part of life. You can see it through uh, different accounts in history. We talk, they talk about gratitude. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if you go to Tao Te Ching, if you go to Greece uh, philosophy, if you go to the Far East, everywhere they talk about gratitude. And the simple fact is gratitude, people mistake it gratitude as being only thankful for the good which is happening in your life now this is where people find it very tough to say thank you for all what we label as suffering yeah people find it very difficult why should i be thankful for that and i've i, I do the same thing i'm guilty of the same thing as well was it why why should i be doing that now here's the thing because of that suffering what we've labeled again this label of suffering is given by us so this, this place where we are in that suffering place, we start blaming things rather than saying, okay, look at all the adversities, challenges, problems which we've had in life. It's helped us move forward. Even if it's one step or two steps, it's helped us move forward because of that issue which has happened in our life. Uh, absolutely. So, it, it's shaped us effectively. I mean, without, without those experiences, you're not, you don't, you're not the person you are, you're not the thoughts absolutely. that you are. And it feels like, yeah. it feels like shit, uh, even what things absolutely. that are happening right now. But, but at the same time, you know, I'm not saying it happens for a reason, but I suppose what you're saying is, is look, with all the stuff that is happening, there's bad stuff, there's a lot of great stuff there too. Don't forget yeah. that. Don't get lost in, 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 in that. 
And that's what you need to be sort of grateful for. How do we, how do people listen to that? How do they do that? Okay, so there's, there's different, you've got to start off with very small, very, very small. Okay, so let's say um, you're having a coffee or a tea, I'm having a coffee and tea. Yes, I'm actually very really thankful that I'm having Hello. that. Cheers. No, so everyone believes we've got coffee and tea in this bottle. <laughs> Irish, Irish coffee. Yeah, so maybe that's why I'm so gratitude. I'm always happy having this tea. <laughs> now, the thing is, even for this small thing, this cup of tea, I need to, it would, it's a good practice to say thankful for it. Why? Because if you look at the whole picture, the tea helps me relax. It keeps me calm. It keeps me, it, it fulfills something for me, so I'm grateful for it. Yes. Now, when something which is painful, which happens to you, what it literally is a trigger showing you something that you need to pay attention to, i.e. an emotion which is going in you, which you have not actually taken care of. You've not embraced it. Now, here's, here's the other thing is, unfortunately, from a young age, we have been conditioned and programmed to put the label as suffering joy good or bad now imagine from a young age if we were taught if we were conditioned if we were programmed by our caretakers saying to us if there are issue, if, if an issue comes up all they say to you say oh just be grateful for it and see what we can do forward from it rather than making up oh this is bad this is really bad because this is what's happening everyone's saying it's bad something has happened in the world which is it is affecting every single person in the world, every single person. Now, there must be something much more greater working over here, which is telling us, people, wake up, pay attention. You are doing something is, which is not quite right for not just the human race, but all the energies which exist in the world. So yeah. how, how about paying some respect to them? So this is a time to pay respect and give gratitude to every single thing. The plants, the animals, uh, the air, the water, every single thing which is existing over there. And all you need to do is say thank you. And why are you thank you for it? There's a reason because it does something for you. Just like you know, the tea you know, does, something, I, for I, the I does to, something for you, the plant does something for you, the water does something for I, I you. I have this um, discussion with my own kids, in fact. And nobody's saying you have to be happy all the time. Nobody's saying, like, delude yourself in some way. Nobody's saying, don't be sad. Nobody's saying, don't be angry. I think what we're saying is, or what I'm saying at least is, is don't stay there. Yes. Be that. Have those feelings, but don't hold on to it. Don't stay I'm there. Sure. Once you've done it or got to that feeling, understand that that's not going to be productive for you, and then move forward. So people who feel like they're not going to get, they're going to lose their job now, they don't know how they're going to pay the bills. Sitting there just worrying about the stress of that scenario or that pain isn't going to help. Start looking around. Google. Call us. Call people like me. It doesn't have to cost money. You know, there's lots of free information out there to get help. But it Absolutely. is all about your mindset and what's going on in between your ears rather than what's going out there. It's a little bit like saying that the weather decides how you feel. You know, it can have an influence, obviously, but you can't, you know, you decide how you want it to feel. You can be happy in the rain or, or you could be sad in it. You know, that is a choice. Very true. So, I'll, so t taking this in a bit further, um, because of what's happened is literally my... So because I run my own business, I deliver training, coaching, and I speak uh, uh, on stages. All my business is wiped out. That's about 25 GBP, 25K of GBP completely wiped out. Now, I could sit down here and mope about it. I could cry about it. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing for myself, I'm saying, okay, thank you. That you've shown this to me. What can I do to improve myself? What can I do? So my, my, my thought process or my, my heart says to me is I've been creating some videos just for people to help them out and saying, here's a video just to you know, keep yourself calm and collective. Yes, you're going to have your ups and downs. And what we need to be in this part is, is, at this time is raise our consciousness. We, what, what people define this as state as what they call is buka, volatile, uncertain, complex and and it's ambiguous that's where we are now rather than focusing on that let us see what else is over there which we can focus us can we somehow improve our skills can we somehow okay like you and i were talking on skype social distancing is happening how about speaking 
via online to someone through to your loved one or your friend reconnect with people and see what's happening with them because everyone is literally going through similar things some are going it at a very very intense level because some businesses have now collapsed people have lost jobs yeah now in this in this thing is now what is that i can do to move forward even if it's a minute step it makes a massive difference and this is where people like you myself other people who can actually guide other people and this is where the thing of pay it forward rather than us charging people to do things let's see how we can guide them and say to them okay i'm going to guide you to uh, for something on what you've asked me what i would like you to do is pay it forward and do a act of kindness towards someone else because someone else needs some help which you have the skill set for and just guide them advise them what they can do give me an example rohit so i'll give you a situation so um we have lots of business owners we've talked about employees and let me talk about employers as well and they are in a situation where there's no money coming in i mean right now in the uk you're in dubai at the moment but in the uk i don't know if you know they've got a a, a grant program where they're going to pay up to 80% of people's salaries for the first yep. uh, for the next 3 months uh, effectively so there's a there's like a buffer there's a support mechanism but in the meantime the business owners are thinking no work coming in i don't know how to i have to pay for my staff who have their own families i'm looking after their families the way i think most of them are thinking it and also i've got to look after my own family you know i've got all these problems how do i start getting out of that what is it i'm supposed to do to start paying forward or get out of that mindset or what what is that what is the what are the next three steps i should take or something like that can you give something as specific as that so so what i what i'm i'm asking people to what what i've done for myself is what i'm using is, is simply say smile okay what do i be my smile obviously you smile on the outside but inside that so first is serve and support what is that one way you can serve and support yourself and your community now it's fortunate uk has this grant in the uae we really don't have something like that because most of us are expats so we have to yes. rely on ourselves i'm sure the government will put something in place to help us out but currently we are not aware of any of, uh, of what's happening on that although they have put in a 1.5 billion uh grant to sustain the economy as such which is great but at the still say same time what about all those workers who who will not get salary what what's going to happen with them so what is that one way you can serve them and support them through your skill sets now as as a as a organization one some companies what they're doing is and and they've done this during the when they've had recessions in the past or other challenges in the past what they've asked is people to have unpaid leave and every single individual in the organization takes it top to the bottom it's not just about the bottom guys it's every one single takes it can they find a creative way where they can actually Uh, cut down the salaries where everyone agrees because there has to be transparency over here yes. and come the here's the situation if we want to sustain ourselves this is what we can give you are you okay with this you know that's, can that's we do something point, right? Right? you know a lot, lot of people are sensible about it let's not be selfish this is where serve and support is very important you, yeah? you know, a lot of people are asking me about what the legal positions are but actually why don't we just agree how we're going to do things these yeah. are bad times i mean this is stuff out of a movie isn't it you know yes. people talk about an outbreak or 28 days later or something it's yeah. madness so so you know let's not let's stop talking about rights and entitlements and let's talk about how we can kind of work together to make things work absolutely uh, we need yeah, things to work because if if we're not going to serve and support each other we are not as a human race we are just selfish individuals who are out there just to think about ourselves but we're a community at the end of the day yes and only as a community this the human race has kept on evolving but if we are not going to serve and support each other we we're, we're going to die simple as that simple think, as that uh, you won't have experienced it over there rohit but over here uh, initially it was almost like people were like stocking up for bunkers you know so the sh- the shops were completely empty you know there's the whole loo rail roll thing uh, that's yep. going to over that's going to kind of gone viral um, and, and people just going mad and people thinking that people are being greedy but actually you know I went I went to the supermarket recently as well uh, to our local Tesco's uh, and um, and there was a queue going all the way around but people were actually very sensible yes, yes. the shelves were empty not because people are hoarding them but because 
Everybody needs something. I mean, I appreciate the shops have now probably put a bit of a, um, a, a, a limit or quota yes. on certain items. I, I, did, I don't know what that quota was. We, didn't, we weren't greedy with it. Yeah. Um, but people are looking out a bit more now and being a bit more sensible. I think also that uh, there was a view that it was only affecting the elderly and those with underlying conditions. So the pubs here were still full. You know, people are still going out to restaurants and so forth because they presumably they're not in the, the risk category. What they're failing to understand is that they're the carriers. Yes. So again, they're not, un, you're not looking at it from a, a, a global or community point of view. Mm. You know, you know they're, they're the ones that are passing it around effectively. You know, in China, which I think won't happen here, they've done a complete lockdown. You know, yes. That's why they are now, it originated there and now it's in single numbers because you couldn't even walk into the street. How that yes. will happen here, I, I really don't know. But I mean, I have to, I'm quite impressed with what they're doing at the moment. There's a big, bold moves. But, but as you say, it's about thinking about more than just yourself. And when you, when you step outside of yourself, you're actually focusing on a way forward, aren't you? Absolutely. So, so this is how we're going to serve and support each other. Be it through, you know, having that. And, and businesses need to be very transparent with their uh, employ, employees. Simple as that. Transparency is very important. We are in a very tough sit scenario at the moment. And only when we join forces together, we will be able to move forward. So that's the servant support. The next is when we look at smile is the M is mesmerize. Mesmerize yourself with everything which is around yourself. And when I mean by that is appreciate what you have. Okay. Suddenly people's luxuries are not going to be as high as what they want it to be. Yes. Or they can't do certain things which they were doing usually. They might say, oh, my freedom's taken away. There is no freedom being taken over here. It's just being socially responsible and seeing what can we do in the isolation which we are in. Now, you and I decided to do this talk. I mean, we've been talking about this for such a long time, but this has allowed us to do this talk. Otherwise, we would have just dragged it, dragged it, dragged it till Life God knows. Away, yeah. yeah. We can, if you have a garden, go and sit in the garden and enjoy the garden. Yeah. If you live with, the, with your family, start talking to your family <laughs> rather than being on phones and I'm busy with work because there's not enough work at the moment. There's t we need the inner reflection. Yeah. Just need to do that. Yep. Yep. Totally. And then is, is, is the next part is in the smile is the uh, be in spirit. Now that is start reflecting what's happening inside you. What have you been doing over the past so many years? And what can you be you know, grateful and what can you improve about yourself? So start, start going inside and seeing because when we talk about gratitude, when we talk about serving and being responsible, when we talk about mesmerizing ourselves, with what we have around yourself it has to be an inner journey you have to start inside yourself now yes you can't go to the gym hey how about just doing some push-ups <laughs> you know sit-ups yeah. at home there's lots of free stuff online workout yeah. all sorts of things i mean it is a discipline thing i suppose at the end of the day Absolutely. you know, I work better in a class a workout class than i do probably at home but but yeah. again it's your mindset isn't it it it, it is something and, and yeah maybe you like the class class scenario because I like group exercise and so forth but yeah, at the end yeah. you're not able to do that because of this thing happening so use whatever is possible because all the means are there we can still do it yeah, yeah? you know um, it, we were talking earlier Rohit um, before we started this um, uh, this recording in fact about uh, Eckhart uh, Tolle and the yeah. power of now and then um, what he would basically one of the big things I picked up from the book which I think is very relevant now is those suffering from depression uh, their mind is in the past. Those yes. suffering from anxiety, their mind is always thinking the future. So True. the idea is to keep your focus in what's happening right now. And when yes. you focus right now, it's very strange if you know, or do meditation or anything like that. You have a you have a much wider perspective and a kind of a balance of what's kind of happening. It's kind of strange. If you, you know, I, I personally also meditate every morning, and it kind mm. of sets the tone for the day of what you're going to do, how yeah. you're going to think, how you're going to behave, um, uh, in those sorts of things. So. So right now, what we're saying is, is, I think what you're saying here is that will be helpful to people is, you know, reflect, start thinking about what you want to do, what you need to do, how are you going to solve the problems? Don't worry about the problem. What is the solution? Let's get, yeah. get those things resolved. The help is out there. There's lots of ways to do it, but you've got to be 
resourceful to find those resources, so to speak. Absolutely. Again, so finding that resources is you go back to the serve and support. How are you going to serve and support yourself and other people is very, very crucial over here. So being that in spirit is like, so you've read the book and I do a simple exercise to be in spirit. You put your hand on your heart yeah. and you say you have gratitude. And when, when, I, when people read that, they say, what a load of all BS. Or Tosh. Some of them say a load of old Tosh. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> so until you're not going to give it a go how are you going to know it's not going to work for you i even said that to you rohit i, I did it i read your book uh, and I, I did it and it, there's an exercise in the book um for those that don't know, know that basically says um chanting your name um talking about things that you're grateful for and, but effectively you're, you're almost thanking yourself uh, and it's 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 a really weird process when you immerse yourself in it because it's you feel quite light and quite focused as a result of it. Um, so I, I found that really useful. I mean, you know, I'm not going to sit and read the whole book, but for example, one bit here talks about here, it says, peace begins from within. Yes. You didn't expect me to do that, did you, right? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> and it says, in this very moment, I have the best of health, the best of a roof over my head, the best of clothing, the best of love, the best of support, the ability to see. I mean, yeah, you know, a lot of people can't. The, the ability to hear, speak, taste, smell, smile, laugh, walk. It's not just, you know, I've got a car, I've got a house. There's lots of simple things that a lot of people don't have. I mean, yeah. really, we're lucky, you know? Uh, I don't know what the stats are of, of, of even being born. Is it like a trillion to one or something ridiculous like that? So, yeah. so you know, there's lots to be grateful for and not focus on the, on the shit stuff, quite frankly. Yeah. And, and this is the challenge is, is which is happening is uh, we are we go into social media we go into media we talk to people and we talk about oh my god what's going to happen what's going to happen what's going to happen oh it's a doom and gloom okay we know the reality is there is no vaccination at the moment we know the reality could be the human race possibly could wipe out let's say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Rather than focusing on that, look at the infinite possibilities which you have. Which are, what are the infinite possibilities? Because those are certain possibilities, but there's so many other possibilities that could happen. Yes. Now, this is where, when you look at the smile, the L comes is living. People are so much focused of living a life of a goal-orientated life. Rather than having a life of goal-oriented, there's nothing wrong with it. But it's all about accolades and applauses. How about just living a life because it's a life full of joy? And appreciate, like you said, can I walk? I can walk. Can I talk? Can I talk? Hey, technology is still working at the moment. We can talk. We can yes. still look at social media stuff. We can still watch television. Okay. But look at it. All of it's external. But you need to go inside and calm yourself down first. It's very, yes. very crucial that's and that's why that thanking and meditation is very very important to help yourself now meditation people get very confused by saying oh i need to sit in a certain position and i need to do some kind of chanting no for some people meditation is actually washing the dishes for some people meditation is ironing clothes for some people it's just looking at a plant it's a focus. It's a focus area which allows you to give, give you some kind of clarity. That's what meditation, it's not about sitting down and say, come on, let's all get together and go, um, no. It's, 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 it's be finding a place of focus. That's all it is all about. Actually, so, I, I personally use a, an app called Headspace. Have you heard of it? Yes. Uh, you Very know, powerful. Know how to meditate. It shows you how to. And I've, I've been using it for like a couple of years now and it's great. Um, you know, it makes you think about things completely differently. So if you don't know how to do it, again, there's free stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, even that one, there's like a trial period for free or what have you. So, and then it's very cheap, not cost prohibitive at all, you know, to keep doing it. Absolutely. And if you, if you can't find a, a, a app or you, you are not, not unable to afford anything, because in the old days, we didn't have the apps. Meditation has been for such a long time, been around. Simple thing is take your hand, put it on your heart and just be grateful what you have. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you need to do. What was your okay. e? If you're driving, not to close your eyes, just say thankful, That'd be thankful. That's all you do. So you be in a living space rather than, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. You're a human being, not a human doing. We're not here to do, do, do. We're being means being one with all what we have with us. 
and appreciate that. Good stuff, Rahit. Yeah. What was the e? What was the e in your smile? So, so e is energy. How are you actually using your energy? Okay. This comes to: Are you using your energy towards all these possibilities of it's doom and gloom and it's the end of the world? Or are you going to use your energy? How do I move forward? What can I do next? Who can I serve? What is that act of kindness I can do? What is that people need at the moment which they're willing to, you know, uh, bring into their lives? Uh, even if, you know, if, 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 for example, you, you, you don't have a job, you've, you, you, you've lost your job because of this. What is that I can do which can serve someone else for which I can get some kind of payment? It doesn't, yeah. doesn't have to be humongously high payment, but think about because it's during these times people come up with ideas to help yes. each other, to serve each other. Because and this is a great well. They have to. Yeah. So this is, this is the process of the smile is what can you do? And it's, it, again, the whole thing about the smile is it's serving and supporting each other. Yes, you serve and support yourself, your family, and it's the whole community, the whole world. Until we are not able to be one with each other, these issues are going to arise again and again and again. Yeah, Rohit, I wanted to talk about uh, three things. I think we may have covered all three of them in one way or another, but let me just go through it again. So we were talking about gratitude as one of the things from yeah. the book that I thought would be helpful to people. Second thing was about taking 100% responsibility for everything in your life. Yes. Uh, and the third thing was the, uh, the compassion disconnect. You know, disruption, disruption moves us from compassion, is what it was saying yeah. from, your, from your book. So obviously this is about as disruptive as it's got for any, uh, most of us in our, in our lives, or whatever, you know, obviously apart from losing loved ones in a, in a personal yeah. sense, but in a global sense, this is as disruptive as it gets. How do we, I think you've already answered the question to be honest, but perhaps just to, to sort, of, okay. sort of hit it home, so to speak, how do we reconnect? How do we get ourselves back on track and stop okay. thinking, God, what am I gonna do with all of this now? Or how am I gonna live to, okay, we know this is only temporary, in the scheme of things, whether it's one month, two months, three months, four months, there is another side to that. This is still, we're still in the storm, we're gonna get at the other side of it. Absolutely. How do we, how do we get that compassion connect back again? For so our, before I come to that compassion part, let me talk about that 100% responsibility. People misunderstand 100% responsibility. 100% responsibility is not a blame game. It is not blaming yourself or blaming another. If a scenario has happened, like what has happened now. Let's take 100% responsibility. If we need to carry out some social distancing, let's do the social distancing. If we need to ration the food which is, being give, which is out there, let's do that. Let's not hoard over the, the toilet rolls and the, and, the, and the pasta and the rice, whatever is out there. Take 100% responsibility. Say, am I being responsible in taking care of the people around me and taking care of myself. Okay, so yeah. let's take responsibility on that. Hundred, not blaming that because he did that or she did that. I'm going to do the same thing. No, raise your vibration, raise it up. So this is where, if you look at some of the work from people like Dr. Uh, Ramesh Segul, Dr. Uh, David Hawkins, Dr. Susan Jeffers, when you look at their work, they talk about when our vibration is low, i.e., we're in anger, we're in upset. Uh, we are we are greedy. We are basically contracting ourselves, yep. contracting ourselves. And when we are contracting ourselves, that means we are not in a state of love. We will only be in a state of suffering. Now, in order to move into that state of love, from that suffering into that love into that joy, we need to use a simple tool, which I I name it as compassion is. Finding ways in how you can actually um, be kind to yourself firstly. Yeah. yeah. And being kind towards others. Okay. Being kind to yourself is the first thing is rather than beating yourself about the situation. Because that's what we do. Now this has happened. Some people, and I'm sure many people would be saying, Oh my God, I should have done savings. Oh my God, why didn't I do savings? I'm such a stupid idiot person. Well, I should have seen this coming up. Yeah. Well, you're in the past now. The reality is you, you don't have it. So what can you say? Okay, I don't have it, but what is the resources I have which I can use? 
So stay focused in that now. So you, because what's going to happen is if the same thing, a friend of yours comes up to you and starts saying this to you, Tosh, you're, going, you're not going to turn around and say, you stupid idiot, why did you do it? You would turn around and say, okay, great. I see where you're coming from. I know that this, this, this has happened to you. Let's find solutions. Let's see what we can do. Let's find the solution. Yeah, That's yeah. what compassion is about. Let's find the solution. It's not, a, you see, compassion, people confuse it with pity. It is not pity. Okay? Yeah. It's got nothing to do with pity. Compassion is simply about finding those small steps to move forward, finding a solution day by day. Now, in a scenario which someone is, is, is crying and moaning, all they need is maybe a hug. That's a point of compassion. That's the solution for them. Maybe another so way of calling it, compassion is maybe looking for the greater good. Yes, look at the greater good, what's, what, what is of there. And so this is going to assist you to move forward and it's going to actually raise yourself from that suffering into getting that clarity, that focus on, ah, maybe I could do this. That is going to help me and maybe that will help other people. Now, if you have dependents, if you have a family and if you are in a stroppy mood and you're in an upset mood, you're in an anger mood, just imagine the impact which you're having on them. Yes. Because you are now damaging and conditioning them in a certain way, saying that life is miserable. But hold on, women, all this time when everything was great, life was great. Yeah. And this incident has happened. People are being in that miserable state is never going to help. Yes, embrace it, learn from it. And let's say step by step, move forward. Like you say to your children, it's not, there's no guarantee you'll be 100% happy all the time. When you're in that lower state, just remember, embrace it and find a way. And I'm not saying fight because fighting is very aggressive, but slowly talk to yourself, move forward. Be around, talk to people who are going to encourage you little by little to move forward. Yeah. And, and minimize your, and if somebody talks about, let's say somebody is ranting about this issue and saying how bad it is, the government's fault and all that. Say, thank you very much for saying that to me. What can we do to move forward? Not the government, not the people. What can we as individuals do to move forward? That's all we need to do. Let's move forward. I think it's, a, it's about the context of it. So, yeah. so, so the context doesn't just mean we've got a coronavirus now and people are dying and we're out losing our work and we're losing our jobs. The context is, is the bigger picture. What's happening over the whole year? What's happening yeah. over the next 18 months? Or maybe it's as short as six months. What are we going to do yeah. afterwards? What's yeah. the fallout like? What are we going to do next? How do we move forward after that? What are our changes of behaviors? All that sort of thing. I, I totally yeah. to get that. So you, you, if you look at it from a statistics perspective, I was listening to some of the doctors, some of the news and all of that. The challenge with, the, with what's happening with the viruses at the moment is if too many people get it and they are in, admitted into the hospitals, the health system can't take it. Yes. So they need to get that curve down, flattening that so that the current people, they can take care of it. Look at Italy. That's what's happened in Italy. The system, the health system is completely gone. Hey, why? Because it's too many people getting unwell because of this yes. and this is what people what the government is or the whole world is attempting to do is get that down and if we were to just look at that small thing and help each other by saying okay let's let's do that a bit of that isolation let's do a bit of that social uh, social distancing you are helping each other other out the other thing is with this vi with the virus is if you if you again just look at the facts. Let's not look at you know this has happened where it's come from because it's this that. Um, if you look at the simple simple facts is they are very concerned that this virus is is catching up very quickly, even though the the, the, the death rates are not as much as what are they compared to the other viruses. But the speed at which it's going is much faster. That is the concern over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So they want to minimize that. And then there are people who are going around, and, and this is really, really sad, that they're picking on certain communities and saying it's their fault. Now, if you go further into the details, it is not the whole society. There's certain selfish people because of their own greedy, selfish things they've actually caused the challenge and there a whole community is being blamed for it? No, we cannot do that. That is not, 
That is not serving and supporting anyone. That is not being kind to anyone. That is actually being totally the opposite. You are causing more suffering by doing that. Yep. Yep. So, so Rohit, let me, let me bring you to the last point of what yep. I wanted us to, to talk about from, this, from the book was about the poverty mindset. I, I appreciate we pretty much touched on that. Yep. Tell us what that is and tell us how we get out of that as, a, as, an, as an employer, employee, um, anybody as a human being. How do we get past this poverty? What is it and how do we get over it? <laughs> now, um, a number of people have been saying to me, hey, how are you coping with this? You know, you, you're in isolation. What about work and all that? My, my, my answer to them is, hey, guys, I've been, is I've been in isolation for the last nine years. And they're <laughs> like, what? I said, I run my own business. And there are times when I get no revenues coming through. There's months and months and months. I strategize. I find ways to implement things and things that are not working out. Still, something happens with at that when I really need something, something does come in. Because what I have done is I've trust the universe. And this is very difficult for people to take that into account is trusting the universe. We can strategize, we can plan, but all that strategy and planning can go all over the place, just like what's happening now because of a small, tiny virus, which is asking humanity, let's practice humility towards each other and to everyone, every energy on this planet. So what we need to remember is keep going, keep moving. The moment you start having a thought, things are really bad, speak to someone who will pep you up. Read something will pep you up. Say to yourself, thank you for at least what I have. And when you start doing that, that and that poverty mindset does start rising. And the thing is, people expect this to happen like this. It doesn't happen like this. When we say some sort of research, I, I cannot recall where the, where the research material is, which I can tell you later on. I'll, I'll send you the information. Research has shown when you say something negative, when you say something negative, it has four to seven times of happening. Okay. Like also, like look at, in the lake. exactly. That's what it is. And now, in order to neutralize that 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 negative thing which you've said out, you have to say at least double the amount of great things to move forward. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, might as well say great things beforehand. You're not running away from reality. There is a reality. It's about not. It's about minimizing your effect of going into the lower vibration, into the suffering side of things. Yes. So that's why when you, before you're going to say something, think about what you're going to say. Just don't have a stupid rant about blah, blah, blah. This is awful. That is awful. Think about it because the moment you say it, you are, you are manifesting it. The yes. chances of manifesting is much higher. Because in our minds, the honest fact is, think about it, Tosh. You meditate, I meditate, a lot of people meditate. How many times do you have bad thoughts or these ugly thoughts coming up? They come in. We can't control it. But what we can control is what we say out to the world yes. there. So yes. might as well say something which is going to get people on a high, get people to move forward, energize them. Because this is a time of energizing each other and energizing ourselves. Yes, totally right. I'm going to get the quote wrong now. It's something like, Thoughts become words, words become actions, actions yep. become behaviors, behaviors become habits, and, and, so, and, that, and that's how we're really so and so and so talking about. So, so yep. just have the right ripple at the very beginning and you'll just start. I, mean, I have to say, I think, I think people are coming together now. They're thinking, I think it's starting to have that impact. They're starting to realize that it's real. It's not something just happening out there. It's happening in here. Um, and and we're, you know, it, we're, we're changing the way that we're, we're operating. For how long, I don't know. Hopefully a few months, minimum, a couple of months. Uh, yeah. The shorter the better. I think everybody just wants to get back onto whatever the nor new normality is. Um, and, we're, you know, we're going to get to do that. Rohit, thank you so much uh, for this. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. And, you know, we can sit here talking for hours. Uh, I know we can. And I know we have. Uh, what I would like to ask you is, if anybody's looking out for, you know, employers or employees, I suppose predominantly employers is who you help, um, tell, tell me maybe in a couple of sentences what it is that you can do to help employers, maybe at this time more generally, and secondly, how can they reach you? How do they contact you? Email, websites, and so forth. So at the moment, if people are calling me and they're specifically talking about, I've got a, you know, I don't know how to manage with this situation, 
Um, it's a matter of being in a, in, a, in a state of resilience, improving your resilience. So I've created a couple of videos which are available on my YouTube channel. I, I talk about them. Uh, what is the that. YouTube channel? So the YouTube channel is uh, YouTube forward slash I am in learning one. Okay, so that's the channel. I'll give you what the channel is. Uh, they're very short videos just saying how you can raise your resilience. And I'm happy to have a word on the phone. And there's nothing like talking to someone and, and just guiding them or just listening to them. Because sometimes you, you, you just don't have to say anything. Let the other person say and you just be a, a listener. That's, How do they have a call with you? You're in Dubai. How do they contact you? Is it by email? So is arranged that way? Or obviously, WhatsApp? we can do Zoom. They can actually, so WhatsApp audio, they can only send me audio notes because over here, WhatsApp uh, calling is banned. It's, yes. it's, it, it's not allowed. So we, we can do a Zoom call if, if that's what they want to do. They can email me. So that's at ROI at ROITalks.com. So that's where they can contact me. The phone number, I'll tell you what it is, plus nine seven, uh, double five, double five, three, double two, seven five. They can contact me over there as well. So they can text me, they can WhatsApp a message to me. Like I said, WhatsApp, the, the calling is not gonna work. They can send a voice note, that's what they can do. How, so this is what they can do. And if there's any other further help, which people usually hire me for is, how do we actually improve our communication? in terms of resolving conflicts, in terms of how do we uh, do presentations and public speaking, in terms of how do we increase our sales. Those are the things which I tend to specialize in, in the communication element in different scenarios which you might be in as an organization or as an individual. Uh, just as example, um, in this time, I am coaching someone from one of the biggest organizations acro across the globe. And they took up the coaching in the time when they're cutting down budgets. Yes. So, actually, it's the right time. They are people so who are still willing to invest. Cost. You know, I at the moment, I, I've invested in myself, and I'm seeing how I can make my business uh, more agile and more streamlined in this in when scenarios like this come up, because they are people who are aware how to do it, who've been in business for God knows how many of years. And I'm taking their help to assist me. So if you have the bandwidth to do that, go out and do that. If, you, if, you, if the bandwidth is not there, then there is enough free resources. And believe me, there are people out there who will give you guidance for free because they just want to serve and support. That's it. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much again for doing this. Uh, My I pleasure. Think, I think we will set up another one uh, like this probably later in the week or later this, in the month as things move forward. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, if anybody didn't get that information from Rohit and they're interested in more details, reach out to me, my details at the end of this podcast. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, everybody stay safe and, uh, and bye for now. See you. Thank you.